Hello. This is a presentation about membrane transport, including diffusion and osmosis. Membranes are everywhere in the cell, like walls in a building, and molecules need to pass through those walls all the time. How do they do that? What moves them to the right place at the right time? What can create a problem? These are critical questions in physiology and medicine. First, we compare two major types of transport, passive and active. Passive transport, or diffusion, does not require additional energy because it goes from high concentration to low concentration, downhill, so to speak. Molecules just move around and spread until the concentrations are the same everywhere. After that, they continue moving but the concentration is not changing anymore, which means that diffusion is over. Example, oxygen goes from the air into the blood because its concentration in the air is higher than in the blood, and if it is not, the person will not get any oxygen. Active transport is, in a way, the opposite of the passive transport. Sometimes molecules need to go from the low concentration areas to the high concentration areas, uphill, if you will, and the additional energy is required to do so. What can provide it? It is the high energy compound ATP, mostly produced by mitochondria. Example, sodium potassium pump, which we will discuss later in the course. In addition to diffusion, there's another example of passive transport, filtration. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from high to low concentration. Filtration is the movement of molecules from high to low pressure. Diffusion takes place in all cells all the time. The major example of filtration in the human body is the production of primary urine in the kidneys. Liquid part of the blood is filtered through the membrane, and the blood pressure must be greater than the pressure on the other side of the membrane. Otherwise, there will be no urine production at all, and this is a very dangerous situation for the patient. Both diffusion and filtration belong to the passive transport, as they do not require additional energy. So how are they different? For diffusion, the driving force is the concentration difference, or as we call it, concentration gradient. And for filtration, the driving force is the pressure difference or gradient. The greater the difference, the faster the transport will be. Let's compare diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion is the movement of any molecules from high to low concentration. Osmosis is the diffusion of water from high water concentration to low through a membrane which is permeable to water but not to some other molecules and ions. So you can say that osmosis is the special case of diffusion, just one special case, but it is very important in medicine. Why is that? First, water is the universal solvent in the body. Second, membranes are everywhere in the cell and they are permeable to water. Now we compare two types of diffusion simple and facilitated. Some small molecules like oxygen can pass through the membrane easily without any special carriers or transporters. This is what we call simple diffusion. Other molecules like glucose may need protein carriers or transporters in the membrane to facilitate their movement, so we call it facilitated diffusion. Always ask, facilitated by what? It is facilitated by the protein carriers. In this case, the rate of diffusion is limited by the number of carriers in the membrane. On this slide, there are two carriers in the membrane indicated by arrows. The more carriers you got, the faster the diffusion is. Both simple and facilitated diffusion transport molecules from the high concentration to the low concentration areas and do not need additional energy. Therefore, they belong to the passive transport. There is one more way of transporting molecules called vesicular transport. It can be of two kinds, exocytosis or endocytosis. Why do we call it vesicular? 
vesicles are the membrane bags inside the cell. Their movement requires ATP. In exocytosis, exo means out, and the vesicles fuse with the cell membrane, releasing the contents outside. In endocytosis, endo means in. New vesicles are formed as the cell membrane surrounds and engulfs outside particles. There are two kinds of endocytosis, phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis is also known as cell eating. The cells engulf solid particles like bacteria that must be killed. Pinocytosis is known as cell drinking. In this case, the cell engulfs a droplet of liquid. On the picture, big circle is the cell and small circles inside it are the vesicles. One is moving toward the cell membrane for exocytosis and another moves away from the membrane after endocytosis. Let's compare hypertonic and hypotonic solutions. Hypertonic solution has a higher concentration of solutes than the cell. We will mark those solutes as capital S. They are particles, molecules or ions that cannot penetrate the membrane. If there is a higher concentration of the solutes, indicated by the upward arrow, it also means that there is less water in the solution than in the cell, which is also indicated by arrows at the W's for water. The water moves through the membrane by osmosis from high to low water level, leaving the cell. Hypotonic solution is the opposite. It has lower concentration of solutes than the cell. Lower concentration of solutes means higher concentration of water, so it moves into the cell from high water level to the low. What would happen to the red blood cells if we place them into hypotonic or hypertonic solutions? In the hypotonic solution, the water moves into the cells, they swell and eventually burst. This process is called hemolysis. In the hypertonic solution, the water moves out of the red blood cells and they shrink. This process is called crenation. If the solution has the same concentrations of solutes and water as the cells, we call it isotonic. In it, water molecules move in and out of the cells at about the same rate, which means that the cells do not gain or lose water. Those solutions are safe for transfusions and can be used in medicine. One example is the physiologic or normal saline solution, which is about 0.9 sodium chloride, table salt. Any solution with a higher salt concentration will be hypertonic. Any solution with a lower salt concentration will be hypotonic. What is the lowest possible concentration of salt? It is zero. This is distilled water, and its transfusion into the patient's circulation may cause hemolysis and even death.